Okay, hey, but this time, I mean, let's talk about Amazon selling, <laughs> since most of our, most of for us, most of us, the focus is selling on Amazon. So let's talk about the elements of growth. So we want to grow our business. That pretty much uh, is applicable to everyone and anyone selling on Amazon. I mean, the point is to grow, right? So thing is that, I mean, things tend to change quite often and especially on Amazon um, with the algorithm changes and updates from Amazon, I mean, there's pretty much changes happening all the time. So we, know, we shouldn't really focus on things. I mean, we shouldn't really focus on doing only things that might not be uh, working consistently. So we, it really makes uh, sense to focus on things that actually stick. So we always need to ba balance between these three things so it's good to consider that what should we actually be doing if we want to grow our business so first thing first thing that we obviously need to have is products that we are selling on amazon right because if we don't have any products then how how are we going to be uh, uh grow so that goes without saying that we need to have products that we sell on amazon but the key difference on selling on uh, Amazon and just selling on your, or basically your own website or, and it's quite different from other marketplaces as well as for example, Walmart is that, I mean, none of these platforms are so focused on the search term as Amazon is. So that's why it really makes sense for us to consider that, okay, we need to find the main search term first and then decide what to offer on this main search term. I mean, uh, sure, I mean, search terms uh, change and usually we find, I mean, uh, search terms that work better for products, I mean, meaning uh, new search terms and so on, but still, when we are starting out, we definitely need to figure out the one main search term and then uh, then focus on like what could we offer on this uh, term. So it's completely different game if we are basically just, okay, let, let's launch a product and then figure out how we are going to be uh, selling the product. It's a completely different game if we are just focusing at like, okay, first, we find the customers first, we want the search term, and then we figure out that, okay, what can we actually sell on this uh, search term? And this is a question I get uh, sometimes is that, why does passion matter? Like, wh why can't you just give me the product opportunity and then I will just start selling on that? I mean, sure, it's one op option that uh, you just get this product opportunity from somewhere and you keep selling it. But, but what I've noticed, uh, especially uh, with our our business, is that I mean, I have quite I have quite many times like uh, ordered, uh, for example, these uh, product opportunity searches and uh, products uh, outside of our company. And at the time, I mean, th those have been really huge product opportunities. But like, uh, if I think like right now that how many out of those products are we selling currently? And it's, it's not that many anymore. So, and the reason is that because we're like constantly eva evaluating that, okay, where do we want to focus on? Which are the products that are really taking off and with, with where, where we actually have the area of interest because where you have the area of interest it really gives you this uh, competitive advantage because you are able to think like the customers which means that you are be be better able to assess uh, different samples assess different marketing campaigns and really assess like how do customers find these products so that means different search terms, keywords, and so on. So it's a completely like game changer. So I would say that, I mean, 
out of all the product opportunities that we have gotten outside, for example, I have just bought some opportunities or I ha hired some consults consultants to I mean give us product opportunities I mean still even though I've gotten uh, loads of those still I mean our main products majority of our products are products that we have found uh, ourselves inside the company and that's because we have had really this narrow focus on these uh, needs and we really understand these needs and these brands like inside and out so th those are those are the basically things that we focus on and it, it really shows off in the long term. Anyway, so we need to have products. So question is that right now, do we need more products? And um, if you don't need many products, I mean, technically you can always have more products, but I mean, more products means that more budget. So if we really want to just uh, focus on maximizing, uh, uh, increasing revenue, increasing profit, then we should consider that are we really maximizing our current products that we have? Are we really doing everything that we can for our current products? For example, in the main marketplace, which could be for most sellers, it's typically the US. So in, in the US marketplace, are we really doing everything we can for our products? Because optimization basically is never ends like once we reach the optimi optimization stage i mean that pretty much never ends there's always things that we can do to increase the sales of our products and then if we decide that to uh, get more products then are we actually able to support more products first of all i mean obviously we need to have more cash we need to invest uh, more into buying new products but it's it's not only the inventory cost and shipping cost i mean there are other other costs as well meaning that uh, first of all we need to have the budget for doing marketing and different kind of ranking campaigns but besides that we also i mean there's also like labor that we need to do so are we able to support uh, more products in terms of in terms of finances and in terms of the labor ship, the workmanship? Because the more products we have, typically the more work it's going to take. Is, is, is the product good enough quality? I mean, is the product that we have currently good enough? So that means in the actual quality of the product itself. And then second element is the the one on Amazon, basically the demand and the competition. Because if the product is not good enough, then we should, then, I mean, we need to consider that, should we just drop this product? Because uh, if, if we start uh, amplifying this product, then um, what happens is that, what, what, hap what happens if, if we just start getting like low quality, if, if the quality isn't really there? Or if the competition is too high, then uh, it's going to be really costly to uh, increase the demand. High demand and high competition, I mean, that's typically the, that's kind of the worst place to be. If you have low demand and low competition, that's not too bad because uh, there's always different things that we can do to increase the demand. And another bad place is to be if you have low quality. Because that means that we actually need to do physical changes on the products. If it's about like user experience and those kind of things, then uh, I mean that's not too bad because then we then it's more a matter that we just need to educate our customers. We need to edu educate our customers with different guides and instructions how to use the product, and we need to educate our customers in, in the actual product listing. And, but also in the product packaging. That means that once the person gets the product packaging, we have some kind of like processor or whatever, how, how do you use the product? But evaluation is something that we should do like, but yeah, I mean, increase in uh, the zoom bar keeps uh, getting stuck here. Anyway, so increasing amount of products evidently increases revenue. I mean, that goes without saying, because 
if you're just going to be increasing the amounts that pro- that that products you have, then for sure it it is going to have a positive impact on revenue. I mean, not necessarily on profit, but for revenue, absolutely. That goes without saying that basically the more products that you have, the more you are going to be selling. So, but the key question really is that, but do we have the budget and capacity for new products? Like we already, I mean, like I was already previously saying that, do we, do we, it's not only financial thing, it's also like this capacity thing that, okay, do we have enough hands to work uh, on every single product? And do we really have, uh, are we really able to maximize and opti- optimize every single product? So it's a good thing to consider that what could we instead do with existing products? I mean, there's many different things, but uh, uh, so, but one thing is really like markets and especially like different Amazon marketplaces because let's say that we are already well optimized on uh, on, uh, on on the US marketplace I'm sure there are different things that we can do to get even more sales in the US marketplace but we shouldn't really uh, like overlook the opportunity to, that we can get in different other marketplaces like the european and so on so as as the marketplaces grow sales will grow as well since we are often talking about uh, like selling doing an exit selling our amazon fba business then we should definitely consider that what what do the amazon aggregators think i mean how can we, um, what's their like thought pattern? And typically Amazon aggregators don't necessarily value external sales as much as sales on Amazon marketplaces. I mean, it goes without saying that profit is profit, sure. But thing is that if you have uh, sales on your own website, that's not really as valuable for the aggregator as sales on uh, same amount of sales on Amazon. And sure, it's a good question to ask that why, why, why is there a difference? Well, the difference is repeatability. Because let's say that I, I buy your Amazon FBA brand, and then you are getting uh, sales on your website. Then I start looking that okay, cool. How how are you getting your sales uh, on your website? I mean, is it ev- is everything organic, or is it basically coming from, from different uh, ads. Let's say that you, it's, it's more like coming from Facebook ads and Google ads. Okay, fine. That means that if I really want to maintain um, uh, the sales, then it basically means that I need to take I need to take your website and start driving traffic to it as well. And m- many of these aggregators don't have such kind of systems in place that they could, they could just start driving like uh, running these taking over like external uh, ad platforms because they are focused on uh, on the Amazon sales channel so it means that um, they are not able to just uh, uh, take your website and start driving traffic I mean sure they can take over the different market um, like uh, the ad- advertising campaigns that you have but are they really able to re- repeatedly do it like year after year and so on so that's why the sales on Amazon are actually much uh, are valued higher than the sales on your own website, because it's just a matter of uh, repeatability. So once I buy your brand, and let's say that I'm willing to pay you like uh, four years of uh, annual annual profit, that means that basically, if if I don't even uh, if I don't see any if the brand doesn't see any growth then i will basically get my uh, return uh, back in four years so but let's say that one of those uh, so an area of that income is actually coming from more website sales and once i take it over it just disappears then boom basically my investment already went down so repeatability and uh, basically taking over the different brands that's the really 
definitely like a key thing. So expanding to English speaking markets, it's, I mean, it's, it's often just copy paste work. It just means that we have the same listings. We just take the, all the images. We just basically do the same listings and we can even do the same advertising campaigns. So it really means that it's pretty low effort. So that's definitely in often cases, it's a low hanging fruit. And if you have seen some of my uh, presentations, like uh, like uh, so showcasing different Amazon sellers, like we can see that most of them are really focused on just uh, one or two marketplaces. So they are basically uh, missing out. And often these uh, other marketplaces than US, I mean, they have so much uh, lower competition. So it's actually much more easier to get sales on these uh, other marketplaces. But yeah, I mean, more products and more markets means more work. I mean, sure, Amazon FBA business can be pretty passive uh, business model in terms of uh, when it comes to e-commerce, meaning that you do, you do not need to hunt down every single sale like you might be able to you might, like you might have to do in your own own store but still i mean there's a lot of manual work to be done so then the third things third element of growth is really workforce because increase in the amount of products or increase in the marketplaces it will require more hands but let's, I mean, if we don't have those extra pair of hands, then it just means that we need to do everything, every single thing by ourselves. So if that's the case that, okay, we want number one and we want number two, but we don't want more workforce. Okay, fine. Then are we willing and able to work more? So meaning work longer hours and, uh, Work, work harder, work smarter, and work longer, like Jeff Bezos demands on Amazon. So are we able, first of all, uh, do we have the capacity to do that? And then are we willing to do that? Because that's what we are going to be, have, have, we are going to have to do if we don't have the, any other workforce. So that's why it's such an ess essential thing to uh, uh, what we can do to, to really get growth is that we just get more pair of hands which is focused on increasing our business. And good thing is also like that having a team, having team members, having employees and all that stuff, I mean, it forces us to really systematize. So this is basically the point when a hobby turns into a real business. And uh, I can see, like, uh, I've noticed, like, from Am some Amazon sellers that they have basically been, uh, well, uh, not really stuck, but they haven't really gr grow, grown at the pace that they could have. And uh, the, I've, I've no noticed, like, a similar thing uh, with, all, with all these different sellers. And it usually pretty much always comes down to that they are just not willing to hire a team. Sure, I mean, maybe, maybe they had just one VA who is just doing the customer service and uh, and so on. But I mean, they don't really have anyone who would be just focused, in, focused on increasing sales. So that's why we are really focused on hiring these sales agents whose like sole purpose is to increase sales, increase uh, sales for the products on different uh, different brands, different marketplaces, and so on. And basically every single person, every single VA brings like 160 hours per month. And if you are mainly hiring from uh, Asia, from Philippines, I mean, it's going to be less than 500 bucks per month. So it's not really even costly. But the thing is that we don't want to hire only VAs because, uh, I mean, Virtual assistant, that's pretty much the first role to hire because uh, as a business owner, we want to clean uh, our table as quickly as possible. So we need to be able to delegate everything like random stuff that just keeps popping up. So virtual assistant is the first person uh, 
to hire for that reason. But we should as quickly as possible, I mean, get this get get the sales agent role. And oftentimes, at, I mean, with us, it has happened that I mean, the VA that you uh, you hire, as, I mean, the person that you hire as a VA turns into this takes over the sales agent role because typically if you hire a VA for your Amazon business they are going to be building just so much knowledge about Amazon so they I mean turning them into the sales agents it's not such a big deal because they already are pretty familiar with everything so it's just a matter of like teaching them uh, this uh, building them this certain type of competence and then just making them uh, focused on increasing sales for specific products on brands and basically I mean we have whole whole, whole training based on this so it's not even that difficult thing thing to do all right but yeah so uh, that's a question I keep getting so often that okay I mean what's a good time to hire more hands like so many people so many sellers are really afraid to hire their VA but they like the first person or if they hire it they just make that person focus only on customer service and that kind of things but I mean much better way is that you have a VA and basically the demand I mean the, the requirements for a VA should always be a couple of things. For example, being organized and then being able to do research work. And then third thing is really being resourceful. So turning that kind of person into a sales agent, I mean, that's 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 builds a really good foundation because the sales agent person re- needs those skills anyway. I mean, re- really being organized, being resourceful, and being able to do different kind of research. So, I mean, I would say that just hire as quickly as possible. <laughs> and I know cases where some uh, people who started selling on uh, Amazon, I mean, at the, they basically started uh, hiring immediately. I mean, even before they had like any pro- products live. So the point that we get more people is that's the real the point that it things get more professional and things get more serious. So this is a question that everyone should ask themselves like right now. So which of these should we focus on right now? Do you want to get more products? Do you want to get more marketplaces? Or do you want to get more hands? So, but the thing is that, uh, and yeah, I mean, I cannot really answer this on your behalf because you need to answer this yourself that, okay, what are the, what is the thing that you should be focusing on right now? So let me know on the chat, like, okay, what do you think that, what, what is the thing that you should be focusing on right now? More products, more marketplaces or more hands? Oscar, same products, every same products, more products and more hands. Yes, good, good. And if we really want to grow fast, then we should do all three. <laughs> so it's not a question of, okay, number one, two, or three. No, I mean, it's just, it means that we have to do all three if you really want to grow fast. I mean, it's fine if you just want to take our time, then, okay, fine, we can take our time. But uh, if we want to do things fast, if we really want to grow fast, then we have to do all, all, all three things. So then the next question is that, okay, fine. We have to do all three things, but uh, we cannot do everything at the same time, right? So then we need to prioritize and like make sure that in which order should we do these different things. So I think number one is get more hands. So that means that we get more workforce. So we are not only getting, I mean, we can find, if we don't ha- have anyone at this point, then, I mean, we should get a virtual assistant, but, uh, and then we eventually turn those people into uh, sales agents. Because as soon as we get uh, a VA, that means that we are able to delegate everything that we have on our, our own table right now. And as soon as we have sales agents, that means that 
we have person who's able to focus like 100% of their time in e increasing sales. Because, uh, I mean, as, as a business owner of Amazon business, I mean, it's, it's not 100% about increasing sales, right? Like we, th there's no way that we can use 100% of our time to increase sales. That's simply because there's other stuff to do as well. I mean, there's different kinds of maintenance things that we just have to get done in order for, first of all, not, not, not to uh, decrease sales. But so for that reason, we need to have someone who, who's only focused on increasing sales. So the re responsibility is not doing shipments and different things. No, no, it's just, just focus on increasing sales. So number two is then increase sales of existing products because um, we should definitely like evaluate the potential of our current products. So we we are e we either need to amplify our current products or then we just need to drop it. And am amplifying means that we are going to put putting more effort into those. So we are going to be making sure that uh, the that uh, first of all might be like increasing ads increasing like organic visibility increasing external traffic and doing different kind of marketing campaigns but if even if, if you're not if you're not sure about the potential of the product then i mean we shouldn't really focus on it because let's say that uh, there's a really this product has been having like quality issues then i mean that's going to be a big problem so we just we should just drop the current product then expand to new marketplaces because if we already have products that have been uh, have proven themselves so, so they have validated in the main marketplaces so maybe in us or maybe in europe so we should as quickly as possible date to those to different like english uh, speaking marketplaces because it's just copy pasting pretty much then last one would be launching new products but of, of course, it's a bit different thing. Like, let's say that we are starting completely from scratch. I mean, uh, then, then it's not really a question of like growing the business. No, I mean, you are, you're still in the grinding phase, meaning that you are still building the whole business. So then, of course, in that case, it, uh, it's actually number one thing. But in terms of uh, growing an existing business that's pretty much the priorities that i have i mean that this is the way i see it so by doing it this way we are able to uh, focus on all three elements and like some of the elements are actually going to be uh, increasing other elements because once once we get more workforce then we are going to be a able to increase the sales of existing products and then again once we get like more marketplaces and once we get like more products then we are going to be needing more workforce so it's all pretty much like dependent on uh, on each other